awesome. That's exciting. I know it's been a long day, but I appreciate you guys hanging in there. Um, So today I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey, as Molly mentioned. I want to kind of take you back um, and kind of start from early on when I was a young girl and walk you through all the way to kind of where I am today and the mindset really that I was in that was required to kind of make some of these big decisions in my life that go against what kind of most people think should be your traditional life path. But before I do that, I want to ask a question. How many of you have been asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? Every hand in the room, right? This is a question that we get asked all the time. And especially um, when I was about your age, although I think we might be kind of, kind of close, maybe, um, my parents would always ask, Stacy, what do you want to be when you grow up? And to me, I always hated this question, and there were three reasons why I hated it. The first was because I was like, define grown up, right? Like, are you talking 25? Are you talking 45? Are you talking 85? Are you talking 105? What is grown up? What does that mean? The second reason why I hated this question was because, what do you want to be? B seemed very singular, like I could only really be one thing. And for me, I was someone who had a lot of different interests all throughout school. I played music, I liked computers, I liked games, um, I liked concerts. I was like, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm interested in. I have no idea if I had to pick one thing, what I really wanted to be. And so the third reason why I hated this question was because I just said it, I had absolutely no idea. My parents would say, Stacy, what do you want to be? You got to decide what you want to be because you're going to have to go to college and graduate with some sort of degree. Um, so you've got to pick what is that thing that you want to be. And for me, I, I was lucky enough, though, to grow up in a family where my parents always believed in two things. One, they always believed in education. And my parents said, Stacy, whatever you do throughout the course of your life and your career, one thing is true, we will always find a way to pay for your education. But the second thing that my parents always did was they were open to new ideas and open to new opportunities. And so one of the things that they did was when I was about eight years old, both of my parents worked at a company called IBM, which is um, a company that back in the day sold a lot of computers. They're known for other things today. But my parents brought home this device. Were any of you, did any of you ever see a device like this in your home? Okay, okay. So I'm not, I'm not too much older then. I thought I was worried. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm dating myself here. But this computer, my parents brought this home. And I was really fortunate because my parents said, Stacy, you have 30 minutes a day that you can spend on this device. And so I always had to kind of think through, okay, I've got 30 minutes. What's the best use of my 30 minutes? What am I going to do on this device for 30 minutes? What was that? (laughs) Okay. Um, Yeah, so I was going to say, so 30 minutes, what are you going to do? And the the first thing um, that I did was, okay, I'm going to play video games obviously. And so I played video games for a long time. And then eventually I started thinking, okay, well, I'm playing these games, but what if I could create these games? And so I started asking myself the question, what would it take to actually create a video game? And I realized that if I wanted to create a video game, I was going to have to learn how to code. And so gradually over time, I started spending my 30 minutes, instead of playing those games, researching online how to code. And I realized, all right, I'm going to have to learn HTML and CSS and JavaScript and PHP and all of these other languages beyond English if I want to learn how to code. And so I started using my 30 minutes in this way. And eventually it came the time where um, I was getting ready to graduate from high school. And my parents said, again, Stacy, you've got to start to decide what do you want to be when you grow up. And the first step towards that is you have to go get an internship after high school, the summer between high school and college. And I was like, man, I mean, I understand the value, perhaps, of going to get an internship, but I kind of felt like this was the one period in time that I had to really go and start something with no strings attached. And so as I was learning how to code, I was like, it would be really awesome if I could start a company and use the skills that I had been learning to go and build something. And so my brother and I had been ideating around all these different things that we potentially wanted to start. 
And one of the problems that we came up with was this issue of usernames and passwords. So how many of you have trouble remembering your passwords to stuff? Pretty much everyone, right? And so we said, OK, we want to go build a program that allows you to store all your usernames and passwords in one place, and then log into everything with just one username and password. So we went back to my parents and said, hey, rather than going to get an internship, the two of us are going to partner together, and we want to build a business. We want to build this website that allows people to log into everything with just one username and password. And my dad kind of you know, took, took this conversation that we were having seriously, but he said, all right, if you guys want to start a business, then you need to move out of the house, and you need to learn how to be financially independent. So my brother and I kind of turned and looked at each other. And when I was just 18 years old, we said, all right, let's do it. So my brother and I packed up our bags, and we decided that it was going to be time to move out of the house and learn how to be financially independent, but also start this company. And through doing this, I learned one of the most important lessons of my life, which was it's always important to get outside of your comfort zone. That's where the biggest learning and the biggest growth happens. And over the course of the next few years, I had some of the biggest learnings and growth that I've had throughout the entire course of my life. So my brother and I picked up our bags and we moved to a place called South Central Los Angeles. Now, again, show of hands, how many people know about South Central Los Angeles? Okay, so not as many hands. So just to give you an idea, South Central LA has not historically been a good place to live. The crime rate is very high. There's a very high gang rate as well. It is not a place that you really want to live. However, it was a place that my brother and I could afford to live in the summer between high school and college. We had done the math that if we rented out a two-bedroom apartment and we rented one of the rooms out to a friend for $450 a month, my brother and I could split the other one bedroom and we could each pay $225 a month. That way, the total would be $900 a month in rent, and we could afford to live there for three months. So we took all the savings that we had from birthdays and chores and building websites for little family friends, and we moved to LA into this two-bedroom apartment where we rented out the other room to be able to afford to live there. And we hunkered down and started working on the business, um, building the first version of it. And one day, as we were working, I was just on Twitter, and I saw a tweet that came through. And the tweet said, um, join me for intimate cocktails in Miami, donate $2,000 to charity, and gave an email address. And that tweet was from a guy named Richard Branson. Again, how many people know who Richard Branson is? OK, so a few of you. So he is the entrepreneur who started the brand Virgin. So if you've ever heard of Virgin Trains, or Virgin Music, or Virgin Atlantic, or Virgin Galactic, he has a space company. He's the guy who started those companies. And so I was like, wow, what an amazing opportunity to go meet this guy who has started a bunch of businesses, given that my brother and I want to start our own. And so I saw this tweet, and I said, all right, I don't have $4,000, but Let's see what happens. So I took the email address, and I emailed, and I said, hi, my name is Stacy Ferreira. I'm 18 years old, so not legally old enough to drink cocktails with you in the United States. However, my brother and I have started this business, and we want to come learn from you. Is it possible for us to come? And we stayed up all night, and we got an email later that night from his secretary. And she said, great. Um, if you can donate $4,000 and be in Miami in 48 hours, then you can meet with him. And now you probably all know um, United States geography, but I'll give you a little visual. California, Los Angeles is over here. Miami is all the way over here. On top of not having the $4,000, we would have to fly all the way over there. And so I did the next thing that I could think of to do, which was hey, you know, I really want to go do this. So I picked up the phone and I called my dad. And I said, again, this is 2011. So I said, hey, dad, I know that you don't know what Twitter is. However, there's this opportunity to go meet Richard Branson. And I want to learn from him about how he grew his businesses. 
can I borrow $4,000 from you? You know the type of parents I have. 30 minutes on the computer, you know, you have to go get a job, go to college, all those things. And so he comes back on the other end of the phone and he says, Stacy, write a proposal for me. I need to understand why you need the money, how you're using it, and most importantly, I want an Excel spreadsheet with a payment plan of how you're gonna pay me back every dollar of that $4,000 if I loan you the money. And so as you guys know, right, the clock is ticking down. I've got 48 hours to get to the other side of the country. And I, I said, okay. Um, so I sat down and, and wrote up this proposal and sent it off to my dad. And then I get a call a few hours later. And he says, all right, walk me through the proposal. So I'm sitting on the other end of the phone. I'm kind of pitching my dad. And at the end of it, he says, all right, here's the deal. Two options. Option number one, I will loan you the $4,000, but you have to pay me back in three months. By the time you set foot on college campus, you have to pay me back those $4,000. Option number two, you don't take the loan. It's a lesson in money management. You decide. And so I look at my brother, he looks at me, and we say, all right, let's do it. Let's take the loan and let's, let's go. And so we took the loan and we packed up our bags and we flew over to Miami. And that's where I learned kind of the second big lesson in my life, which is this. Keep an open mind and recognize that opportunities are all around you. So the first thing that happened when we got to Miami was his secretary, Branson's secretary, came to meet us. And I asked her, I said, hey, you know, how many people saw that tweet, emailed, and then responded to come here today? And she said, well, you know, Stacy, it's really interesting because we had 25 slots available. We had planned on there being 25 people coming um, to meet with him. But the thing that was really interesting is only 18 people actually responded to that tweet. Out of the millions of followers that Branson has on Twitter, only 18 people actually took the effort to go and respond. And I was like, hmm, that's really fascinating. Because all my life, I had always thought that there are these opportunities out there. And the question that I had in my mind was, you know, why would they pick me, right? I'm gonna apply to this thing, but why me? And right in that instant, it caused me to think about it a little bit differently and to say, why not me, right? If there's only 18 people that are replying to this, why not me, why not you? And so changing that mindset. And over the course of the time that we were there, my brother and I spent two days in Miami meeting with Branson, talking to him about who we were, the business that we were starting, the ideas that we had, and how we planned to grow the company. And asking him a lot of questions about how he had started Virgin, um, how he had thought about expanding into these different brands, and how he had grown those businesses along with his teams. And my brother and I had one goal out of this entire meeting, which was simply to get Branson's email. And the reason for this was we knew that relationships took time to build. And if you truly want a mentor, you have to invest more than just two days in that relationship. So we said, let's get his email and let's make sure that we're building that relationship with him over time. And so after those two days, my brother and I went up and we asked, can we have your email? Here's a pen and paper. Could you write it down for us? And I'll never forget, he, he wrote down his email, and my brother immediately scooted over to his secretary and was like, is this really his email address? And she was like, it is, so keep it close. And so then my brother and I flew back to South Central Los Angeles, more motivated than ever before, and we really hunkered down on building our company called My Social Cloud. And we, again, we went through a bunch of different stages when we were building it. Um, the first thing that we did was build the initial prototype, um, and then we went from there on, on to getting our first customers. And about two years later, after we had built that prototype, launched it, gotten customers, went back and iterated on it, um, going through that process multiple times, we got a few other opportunities. Um, a bunch of companies came to us and said, hey, um, you've got a technology that's actually pretty valuable. We think that could be valuable in our company as well. 
And so in 2013, my brother and I sold our company to Reputation.com, a company that's a Silicon Valley-based company up in the San Francisco area. And after my brother and I sold that company, um, one of the things that I kept getting asked from people was, okay, Stacy, you're 20 years old, you've sold your first company, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so then I went on this personal journey of asking myself a similar question of, you know, how do people really discover the things that they're interested in throughout the course of their life? And I partnered up with a friend of mine named Jared Kleiner to interview a bunch of people just like you, asking questions about how do you think about what it is you want to do with your life and with your career? What are the interests and things that you want to explore during that time? And we published this book called Two Billion Under 20, chronicling 75 stories from kids all across the globe talking about what they think about their future career. And in doing that, that got me thinking a lot more about how work is really changing over time. And one of the things that I then did as I was thinking about this progression of, of how work has changed is I went back and I had an opportunity to actually talk to my grandma. And I asked her, I said, Grandma, you know, how did you think about your career? Because I was finding some really interesting stuff from the kids that I was talking to. And she said, you know, Stacy, it was really simple. She grew up in Portugal, immigrated to the United States when she was 18 years old, about the time that I was starting my first business. And she got a job working in a factory, and she worked that one job in a factory for 42 years. She put my dad and his two siblings through college, and that was her career. She worked that one job. And then I was really fascinated because I, I um, saw kind of the way that work is changing, and I went and I talked to my mom, and I said, okay, mom, tell me about your career. And my mom said, well, you know, it's really simple. I've had, you know, four, maybe five jobs throughout my career. Uh, she worked one job as an accountant right out of college, then switched to a different company as an, as an accountant, then switched to a different company as an accountant, met my dad, decided she wanted to have some kids. So it says unemployed. Anyone who's a parent knows that that's not really unemployment. She took some time off to raise my brother and I, and then she went back into the workforce working another accounting job. And she did that for the course of her entire career. But the thing that I found really fascinating in writing my book was that our careers were looking something like this by the time that we were 25, right? So the speed at which we're working jobs is increasing. But the other thing that you'll notice is that the way that our generation thinks about jobs is also a little bit more fluid, right? So we might be working a job or working at an internship while also working on a startup, while also um, trying to have a career as a mu musician or an artist or an author. And so the way in which we're working is very, very different. And we're kind of piecing together all these things that we're interested in to make that career. And that was really fascinating to me. And one of the things that I learned through all of this is that, you know, employees are having a lot more flexibility today. And the way that we work is going to be categorically different than the way that our parents worked. And that a lot of us will have the benefit of picking a lot of our work hours, picking where exactly we work, and having more autonomy around picking exactly who it is we work with and the projects that we contribute to. And so, as I was kind of researching all of this and publishing the book, again, the biggest takeaway that I had was that the way that we're working is changing. And all these on-demand economy companies like Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and Amazon Flex and Postmates were all coming onto the scene, allowing people to have immense flexibility, simply downloading an app, choosing when it is they want to work, opening up that app, going to work, and get paid. And that was really fascinating to me because I saw that flexibility as something that really could disrupt a lot of, inner, uh, a lot of in industries and the ways that they hire people today and attract people in their jobs. And so I was lucky enough with my book to be able to go on a book tour and talk a little bit to folks all across the United States about um, how the world of work is really changing. And at one of those book tour stops, I spoke at an event, and there were a few really interesting and influential people there. Now, most of you probably recognize Elon Musk up here. Um, and so the person who is standing right to the left of him, 
or I guess maybe your right, is his wife, Tallulah Riley. And Tallulah and I kind of hit it off immediately. She had been interested in the future of work and obviously interested in startups through everything that Elon had done. And at the time, I was kind of thinking about what might be next for me. I had just gotten accepted into the Teal Fellowship, which Bodana had mentioned. And one of the things that I started thinking about was, is there a way that we could go and change the future of work? And so in 2016, Tallulah and I decided to join together to co-found a company and build a business that would allow more traditional brick and mortar companies, retailers, restaurants, hotels, golf courses, amusement parks, businesses that have hourly jobs, jobs where someone comes in, clocks in and out, to be able to work a lot more flexibly on their own time where instead of the employee getting a list of all the hours that they have to work every week, allowing the employee to pick from a list of all the hours that need to be worked, which ones they want to work. And so in 2016, again, Tallulah and I started this company called Forge, allowing employees for the first time to be able to actually pick and choose all of the hours that they work at their employer. And ever since then, we've been on a journey of building this business. Again, like the first business that I did, it started with building that minimum viable product, having a thesis around what we thought the future of work would look like, and then actually building a product um, that, that kind of mirrored or solved the solution of, of the problem that we saw. From there, it was acquiring our first customers, so actually launching the product into market um, getting a lot of our first customers on board, and from getting those customers, getting a lot of feedback on what are the things in the product that we've built that are working for you? What are the things that aren't working for you? What can we change to make this experience better for you? And once we started going through a few cycles of that and we started getting a lot more customers onto the, the Forge platform, we decided to hire out a few more folks. Um, we were able, fortunate enough, very grateful to our investors who invested about $4 million into this business to allow us to hire really smart folks onto the team to help us build out this vision even further. And then from there, really building a funnel and a repeatable process around how we acquire customers, how we service those customers to provide value to them. And so that's kind of the simple short way of, very abbreviated, of building um, this business. And as we kind of went on acquiring more customers, again, just iterating on that product. And the lesson that I learned through all of this is really this, which is throughout the journey of starting a business or writing a book or working on your art or whatever it may be, this is the lesson to learn. You are going to explore a lot of different opportunities, hone in on one that you're really interested in, try it, you will likely fail, right? A lot of people, the first time we do something, we often don't succeed. So be prepared to fail, but then get back up, learn from that failure, iterate on that, and then repeat the whole process, right? Explore a new way of doing things, try something new, um, again, fail, learn, repeat. And so this is the process that within the company we live by. And by the way, when we fail now, everyone at the company is actually older than 21, so we cheers with champagne on that. That means if we're failing at something, there's something to be learned from that, and we embrace that, we like that. And so, again, I, I wanna say, you know, a lot of the things in life that are most worth doing are often the most challenging things. So when you think about what are all the things that you wanna kind of explore throughout your career, don't shy away from the things that might seem hard, right? Oftentimes, people will say, you know, if, if you, really have a conviction around, maybe college isn't right for me. Maybe going and getting that internship isn't right for me. Maybe I want to start a business, or at least try it from the get-go. Those challenging things, again, make you learn and grow so much as an individual. So I want to um, kind of wrap this up, but I want to leave you with a quote. So this is a quote from um, JFK. And this is in reference to when the United States actually went and landed on the moon. He said, we do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And that is the way that I would encourage you all to think about your career and what it is you choose to do in the future. Building disruptive technologies is not easy. 
But again, you don't do it because it's easy. In a lot of cases, you do it because it is hard, because you want to learn and grow. And so the last thing that I want to leave you with is, as many of you are probably thinking about this question, again, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would challenge all of you to think about that question just a little bit differently. Many of you will have many careers throughout the course of your life. And so instead, I want to challenge all of you to ask yourselves the question, not what do I want to be, but what are all the things that I want to explore throughout my lifetime? Thank you so much.